The human brain is one of the most studied subjects in science, but still much is a mystery, including the interplay between the brain and other organs, like the eye. At the UC San Diego Stem Cell Program, researchers are growing tiny brains from stem cells in order to further their understanding. And they're not the only ones using this approach. In order to get the complete picture of how the brain develops, we need to understand what happens when the brain receives and processes sensory information from other organs such as the eye. And that's where Carl Walling comes in. The connection between the eye and the brain has fascinated scientists for hundreds of years. It seems miraculous that rays of light can be transformed into a complex understanding of the world. But sometimes, the system breaks down leaving people in the dark. Photoreceptors or ganglion cells can die. And once those cells are gone, those cells are gone permanently. And so we're looking at new ways to restore function to the eye. Carl Wallen is the director of the Richard C. Atkinson Laboratory for Regenerative Ophthalmology at UC San Diego. His lab uses stem cells to create tiny human retinas in order to study eye disease. And hopefully one day, cure blindness. One of the powerful things that we can do with retinal organoids is to introduce patient-specific mutations. And this is something that's um, really been made possible over the past five years by new gene editing techniques. Wallen's lab uses the CRISPR gene editing technique to create retinas with the exact mutations found in people with eye disease, so he can study how they develop and what treatments might work on each mutation. Previously, most of the kinds of studies that we would do to study inherited retinal degenerations would be done in animal models, which take a long time to develop, and they're not very scalable. The ability to make human organoids with disease-relevant mutations means that we can have many mutations, we can have thousands of samples, and we can test many of these with different drugs. You just simply can't do this with living animals in the same scale. He's teaming up with the Mwatri lab, which builds brain organoids, to study how the brain and eye influence each other during development. But we know from decades of research in other species that sensory input is very important for brain development and vice versa. The information that we can get from this kind of approach, the cerebral organoid retina co-culture system, will allow us to understand how those connections are made. There are diseases such as Leber congenital amaurosis in which photoreceptors die at a very early stage. So this is childhood onset. It's not clear what happens to the brain connections once those photoreceptors are lost at a very early stage. So if we're able to cure blindness, this is gonna require knowledge of photoreceptor protection, as well as to understand how those connections in the brain could potentially be perturbed. So over time, as we've developed this uh, cerebral organoid retina co-culture system, we've recognized certain technical limitations. And one of them is that the retinas and the brains they tend to be absorbed by one another. And so we need physical structures in order to separate them. Xiao Chen Chen's uh, group has a lot of experience developing biocompatible materials uh, using 3D printed scaffolds. And we're using this knowledge and their expertise in order to, to build a better system. So they've been building three-dimensional scaffold systems for us to separate, physically separate the retinas and the brains. And this is gonna be one of the critical components that we use in order to build a better integrated brain retina circuit. At the same time, Wallen's lab is looking into a treatment for eye disease straight out of the animal kingdom. There's a new area in retinal research and it's a very fascinating area. It's called endogenous regeneration. And this is the process whereby specific support cells in the eye can be reconverted into other retinal neurons such as photoreceptors or ganglion cells. When you think about endogenous regeneration, uh, probably the most powerful example is a lizard or, or an amphibian that has lost its tail. A lizard that loses its tail can grow a completely new tail in a relatively short period of time. In the eye, there's a similar situation. Some types of fish, such as zebrafish, have been shown to regenerate an entirely new eye once when lost. In mammals, we seem to have lost this capability. 
at least naturally, to do this. There is recent literature that suggests that this can actually happen if given the right instructions. And so our lab is very interested in, in taking knowledge from other species, using this in our system in order to endogenously regenerate retinal neurons. In 10 years from now, what I really hope we'll be able to accomplish with this system that we're developing is a platform to test new therapies. There are hundreds of mutations which need to be addressed, and we can't do this on a case-by-case -case basis. If we can have a system where we can study many different mutations in a system that's physiologically relevant, coupled to a brain, we would have a system where we can test new therapies like drug discovery or gene therapies, or in the best case scenario, endogenous regeneration. And if it did work to cure hundreds of mutations, uh, this would be something that would be extremely powerful and would transform the way medicine works.